Hey everybody, it's Tom. Thanks uh, for your patience. I'm sorry to be a little tardy getting back to you this week. In connection with uh, some themes which arose in the conversation I posted previously with Daniel Victor Brown, I thought we'd revisit Henry David Thoreau's uh, essay on civil disobedience. I um, read it from this nice little edition here, uh, but of course it's widely disseminated and available. Uh, Specifically, it arose in connection with the issue of democracy and certain challenges which arise in connection with contemplating a radically democratic framework. One of the objections forthcoming to such a framework is the idea that it is all too amenable to a despotism of the majority. Certainly legitimate concern a concern which Thoreau himself shares and which finds some illusion in the remark, the question with which he closes his seminal essay on civil disobedience. And I will go ahead and reread that remark right now. Thoreau uh, tells us, um, the authority of government, such as I am willing to submit to, for I will cheerfully obey those who know and can do better than I, and in many things even those who neither know nor can do so well, is still an impure one. To be strictly just, it must have the sanction and consent of the governed. It can have no pure right over my person and property but what I concede to it. The progress from an absolute to a limited monarchy, from a limited monarchy to a democracy is a progress toward a true respect for the individual. Is a democracy such as we know it the last improvement possible in government? Is it not possible to take a step further towards recognizing and organizing the rights of man? There will never be a really free and enlightened state until the state comes to recognize the individual as a higher and independent power from which all its own power and authority are derived and treats him accordingly. And then he proceeds on from there. Uh, but working evidently within a kind of social contract framework, the idea of the consent of the governed as a as a necessary, if perhaps not sufficient, uh, ground for the legitimacy of a state, uh, we see an appreciation on Rousseau's part that there needs to be more than simply a reliance on a mechanism of voting and on a mecha mechanism, I would suggest, and I'm reading between the lines a little bit here, of a not merely representative democracy but one which involves a delegate framework where you have greater engagement from a municipal basis upward, which annuls the manner in which the representative framework actually serves as a mechanism whereby the people in general are divided from direct involvement in the decisions of... Um, the polity, which is so important to their life and lives, if for no other but main um, infrastructural and economic reasons. And uh, in this connection, I want to raise one other passage from the essay, which uh, is really rather shocking, almost to contemporary sensibilities. But I don't think it's it's cited with uh, so much frequency, and that's in connection with the institution of. Voting. And in this regard, paragraph 11, Thoreau tells us all voting is a sort of gaming, like checkers or backgammon with a slight moral tinge to it, a playing with right and wrong with moral questions, and betting naturally accompanies it. The character of the voter is not staked, I cast my vote per chance as I think right. But I am not vitally concerned that right should prevail. I am willing to leave it to the majority. Its obligation, therefore, never exceeds that of expediency. Even voting for the right thing 
is doing nothing for it. It is only expressing to men feebly your desire that it should prevail. A wise man will not leave the right to the mercy of chance, nor will it prevail through the power of the majority. There is but little virtue in the action of masses of men. The only real action, then, is the action of the individual in the space of his own life. And this, is, I think, is the ground for the skepticism which Thoreau is advancing with respect to voting. I should add that that paragraph concludes with this interesting sentence. Only his, And he's talking about the abolition of slavery as per... The issue of the time, this essay uh, comes out in 1849. I think it may have been a lecture or initially, like in 1848 or so, but in any event, he says, only his vote can hasten the abolition of slavery who asserts his own freedom by his vote. So he's not ruling voting out altogether. But what he is doing is saying... We cannot be satisfied with voting and with a reliance on the logic of majorities to advance true progress. In fact, we can't be satisfied with the state apparatus, to use a, a word that comes somewhat later, um, in any deep way to move us forward. We have to engage the people in our own lives in a direct and in a loving way, which no longer conduces to um, the inertia which uh, both the state and which certain market mechanisms conspire to uh, assert and whereby <clears throat> some rather regrettable injustices continue. And I could go on at some length, um, but I'm going to restrain myself for the press of space and time and conclude only with uh, an exhortation to go out and revisit Thoreau's fantastic essay on the duty of civil disobedience yourself. And it, 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 weren't, it I have to say that while a fantastic piece, it's also not for many of us, it was not for me a comfortable piece to read. Because it makes quite evident um, the manner in which we all are, <laughs> to use a Mertonian phrase, um, guilty bystanders. And we, most of us could really do something more to help bring the world to a better place where the sorts of issues countenanced by uh, these, or not, that's not the best word, but uh, the issues which of which this sort of uh, reasoning makes us think um, can be can be dismissed. So all said, just wanted to go back on a few remarks about Thoreau on civil disobedience and his other works in here. Always good to visit Henry David. Um, and I might actually uh, talk about Camus next week. I don't know. We'll see. And may have a conversation coming up later in the week. Uh, we'll get some irons in the fire. Thanks, guys, for watching. Hope it's food for thought. And I will catch you next time.